Welcome to the Encouragement for Work podcast with your host, Mark Griffin, founder and owner of In His Name HR. Each week, Mark interviews nationally known thought leaders from corporate America, higher education, churches, and ministries. His goal is to bring you great ideas that help engage your employees, shift your culture toward higher performance, and increase employee loyalty at the organization you lead. Each episode features an idea or process that's made a tremendous impact on employees and employers alike. Now sit back, relax, and listen in as he delivers encouragement today through this episode's special guest. Hello, and welcome to the Encouragement for Work podcast. We are so glad you are here. I'm your host, Mark Griffin. Today, we are really excited. We will be discussing a topic that is near and dear to my own heart, building cultures of wellness at work, and home. Let's reflect for a moment. What does the word healthy mean to you? What does it mean to you? We all have our own opinions of health and wellness based on our own unique experiences, yet it's essential to have a unified understanding in any workplace that creates a specific culture of wellness. Today, we will be meeting with Dr. April Jones, a healthcare leader with over 20 years of experience in optimizing and creating innovative processes. Dr. Jones is the CEO and founder of Storehouse Wellness. She champions a holistic, faith-based approach to health. Dr. Jones has spent many, many years in traditional health care, and she's going to tell you a little bit more about that. Dr. Jones, welcome to our podcast. Please tell the listeners a little bit more about your background. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Mark. You know, I have felt like I'm coming into a new awakening, like a brand new career in some aspects. You know, over the last 20 years, I have spent some time directly with patients in the retail pharmacy setting and in inpatient operations management, as well as ambulatory care, learning about all of the different disease states, specialty, and then spent even the last few years in big pharma, in the oncology space, learning more about precision medicine, and also then in the payer space, building relationships with large employers, understanding how those decisions are made and and what to invest in when it comes to your funds and and how to navigate these ever increasing growing cost of care when it comes to chronic disease. And um, after spending some time in ministry school in uh, 2022, 2023, I realized that there is a real value in focusing on faith-based, really a disease reversal, disease prevention and not just helping people stay on medications forever, but identifying those unique opportunities to help people live healthier, live well without the crutch, so to speak. Exactly. Well, that's wonderful. And what we'd like to talk about today is your program that you bring to organizations from Storehouse Wellness, because we're trying to bring encouragement for work in 2024. And part of that encouragement for work for me is living a healthy lifestyle. Are we taking care of our bodies? Are we taking care of our mind? Are we taking care of our spirit? And as employers, what are we doing to help navigate our employees to a lifestyle that's conducive to uh, prosperity and and health and wellness and being a great representative of the company or college or ministry or church that we serve. So with that being said, Storehouse Wellness, could you kind of frame out a little bit for our listeners on what services you offer and how you work with employers to offer those services? Absolutely. You know, I think I have to start by explaining the rationale of a comprehensive approach to wellness, so to speak, total well-being. And what does, what areas of our life does that really contribute to the foundation? Wonderful. Yeah. That would be great. So of course, when you think about, okay, how do I paint a perfect world? How do I paint the perfect picture? It makes a lot of sense when you think about the things that impact us the most, right? It's how we fuel our body depends on, has a a true impact on the way that we feel. Physical fitness and activity lends to healthy musculoskeletal frame and also pain, you know, 
pain and, and just a overall ability and, and core strength. Then you think about mental wellness and you think about finances and there's this overlapping effect that happens in each of these categories. It's been identified that, you know, finances are a recognized form of stress in the majority of the U.S. right now, especially as we're coming out of COVID, especially when we're dealing with inflation in the economy and even cost of care when you have good insurance. It's there's still an amount that, you know, we're we're maybe not budgeting for as the average everyday American, particularly around chronic disease or catastrophic disease that could be very expensive. So all of these things rationally have an overlap, but I really wanted to see what is the data behind that. And, you know, so we have a white paper on our website that digs a little bit deeper as to how those areas really impact each other. And then I thought about Obviously, bringing everything into one solution or one place makes a lot of sense, but how do we really help towards success? And there was a recent, there was a recent Forbes article that was out that talks about the importance of accountability, support, and navigation, and how people who utilize that type of tool as they're engaging in goal setting towards wellness behaviors see a 95% increased chance of success. And that's massive. So our goal, my goal was really to remove fragmentation of wellness and then also add this aspect of accountability and support. So that's what we did. Accountability is very important to any aspect as it relates to wellness. People can't do it on their own. They might be able to begin on their own to lose weight or develop physical fitness. But I know myself through my journey without accountability and setting goals, I would have never got to where I wanted to be from a wellness perspective. So accountability is absolutely critical and you've created an organization that provides accountability. Yeah, it's such a great point, Mark. Thank you for sharing your insight because when we think about our own journeys, right? Like you can be a very uh, driven person, successful person, even very knowledgeable and educated person, but we all fall short when we become overwhelmed or discouraged. And so sometimes it's really a matter of of assessing those goals that we've set for ourselves and say, are they the right goals for this season? Are they attainable? Are they are they smart goals? Like when in the definition of, of smart, are they measurable? Are they attainable? You know, and so that's the purpose of our navigators is to ensure those goals are the right goals for that person in that season. And what are they doing to get there? And how do we keep them encouraged? And how do we keep them engaged? So we set out to find the best of the best in the Christian business space when it comes to our different pillars. So we have the nourishment pillar, the physical fitness pillar, mental uh, wellness and physical fitness, and I mean, and uh, financial health. And so we were able to do that. We were just very blessed that we've been able to partner with organizations like Ramsey Solutions and share the struggle uh, led by Ryan Miller and, you know, content contributions from Dr. Caroline Lee, Faith Fit TV and Faithful Workouts. We just have brought together the best of the best content to really help people be successful and to also give data analytics. That's wonderful. So the four pillars that we're going to talk about briefly in today's podcast next is nourishment, physical fitness, mental wellness, stress management, and financial health. All four of those pillars fit right into the next category If you don't have great nourishment, it's very difficult to be physically fit. If you don't stay physically fit, it's hard to stay mentally aware and manage your stress. And of course, all of us know if we're living a bad financial perspective, we have a bad financial issues at home or with our employer, it's going to cause a lot of stress. And that's really where Dave Ramsey comes in. He provides a lot of peace for organizations that these employees can get financial peace and go about and live, you know, courageously in their community. And you're providing something very similar. So let's talk about the first pillar as it relates to nourishment and what your firm's perspective is around that pillar. Yeah, absolutely. So when we think about nourishment, it it goes beyond um, just counting calories. What we have found in, as we think about the person as a whole person and the fact that there are significant things in terms of our daily habits, what we expose ourselves to, what we fuel our body with that can even potentiate or exacerbate disease. So it's really, we're really educating in a new way in a way that people can can simply make substitutions that lend better to fueling their bodies. So 
for example, educating on inflammatory food properties, how to source your your food in a way that is, you know, void of preservatives or uh, really taking more of a whole foods approach to what you're eating and then also understanding the chemicals that can impact the value of the food. Also being aware that everyone is a little bit different and there's some some common principles that we can take, but we also have to be mindful of food sensitivities and aware of our body and how we feel, how our body responds after eating certain foods. And so we really hope that people walk away empowered to be able to make better food choices for them. Nourishment is incredibly important to employers because as we know, there's an obesity crisis across the United States and every realm. And we see it every day. A lot of our HR folks that we work with nationally sometimes have to do interventions. They have to approach an employee and say, we're very worried that you might be approaching a heart attack or a stroke. We need you to go to a physician and get a return to work note saying that you're healthy to continue to work in the warehouse or in production. It's an issue. And as we peel it back, my understanding the last couple of years, most people don't understand the issues when you buy things in a bag or a box They're not eating whole foods, and and you're right. They're eating a lot of things that can cause inflammatory issues. Even if they don't have that medical issue, a predisposition to it, it could cause inflammation. So nourishment is a really important aspect as well as physical fitness. So why don't we talk a little bit about the physical fitness of employees? Absolutely. You know, when you look at the IHPM studies or data that talk about productivity at work, it's incredible that there's been recognized value anywhere from a 1.5 times to three times ROI reported for any wellness dollars spent. And part of that is not just saving on cost of care, but it is really what is called the burden of illness or the BOI. And so that impacts presenteeism, absenteeism, Overall employee wellness is very important to the way that they show up and and can perform their role, to your point. And so we're really trying to focus on key behaviors and aspects that really meet them where they are and allow them to make progress. And so to your point, for those employees that have more, you know, severe concerns, you know, less ability, we really wanted to have options so that everyone feels empowered to be able to become stronger with the resources that they have. So we have actually contracted with currently four fitness partners so that we can offer a wide range of both like preference, fitness type preference, whether you are, you know, very fit and want high intensity training or limited mobility that you can do from a chair. Wonderful. That's excellent. And the next pillar is mental wellness or stress management, which I mean, we, we're in a national crisis right now as it relates to the mental health. I mean, so many world events, what's happening politically, financially, the turbulent markets, wars, rumors of wars, a- anything that you can think about is happening in the workplace. We've never, as a HR firm in the last 13 years, have never witnessed it so tumultuous right now. So what services do you offer in that area? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we can't turn our brains off, (laughs) right? When we, we can't really silo ourselves from work to home completely. So those stresses come with us 24 hours a day. We, I, I really acknowledged kind of like the sensitivity around the mental wellness topic and as an employer and digging too deep into their home life, but we also want them to feel fully supported at work. So our mental wellness pillar really focuses on a few different things. One, it are um, eight-week courses that are on difficult topics that are super relevant for almost anyone, whether it's dealing with anxiety or depression, grief, loss, shame, divorce, many different topics. So that comes from Share the Struggle. Then there's workbooks and journaling. And then we, we also felt it very important to include Bible study, to include devotion, daily devotion, and also the opportunity for a, you know very confidential chaplain services that are separate from, from the other things, separate from navigation, so that they really have a 24-7 safe place to come with their, their major stresses and issues. Wonderful. And finally, the last pillar, which I, again, I fully support this, is financial health, making sure that the employee has the right resources, the right goals, and that they're able 
able to navigate their family and their lives in a God-honoring way from a financial perspective. Tell us a little bit more about that, doctor. Yes, we are so humbled and honored to, you know, work with Ramsey Solutions. They bring so much expertise and success to that space and really the testimony of how engaging in the behaviors of changing the money mindset really can lead to largely impactful changes in the financial health of of any family. So we have every member has access to Financial Peace University as well as Ramsey Solutions Plus. And then we also preface that though with Kingdom Chaplain does a really great in-depth presentation on the biblical approach to money mindset. Wonderful. What does God say about poverty? versus abundance and being a good steward and being generous, all of those topics are covered. Sure. It's his money anyway. That's right. Absolutely. So April, you've been a great guest. We've covered so much material in a very short period of time. I know it's going to bless our listeners. If any of our listeners need help, what's the best way that they can reach out to you? Yes. So we are doing direct employer contracting. We have several different options for that. Uh, We also work with insurance agents and brokers, consultants. They can find us at storehousewellness.com that we have videos and ways to connect on our website. And then also, if you just wanted to email us directly, you can email us at hello at storehousewellness.com. That's wonderful. Thank you for the contact information. We'll have all those links in the description of this podcast as well. Doctor, again, it was great speaking with you. Listeners, you have a great and prosperous day. God bless. Bye-bye now. This episode of Encouragement for Work has been brought to you by Job Shepherd. Post-COVID-19 recruitment has been unquestionably hard for employers, with many struggling to find quality employees in the aftermath. Religious exempt employers have had an especially difficult time. Welcome to Job Shepherd, a platform that will change all of this for you. Job Shepherd was created to meet the demand by Christian employers, including ministries, camps, churches, colleges, and Christian for-profit companies in their search for qualified job candidates. Now, for a limited time only, employers post a job for free. Job seekers, come join us. You are always free. Learn more at www.jobshepherd.com.